Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, my name's Doug and this is uh, the sixth and final part, you'll be pleased to hear, on uh, basic processing of astro images in uh, Photoshop. Uh, and this is uh, finishing off uh, a few little bits and pieces that you can uh, do to the image uh, before you put it away or show it to your adoring public or whatever you want to do. Okay. Now most of the uh, adjustments we're going to make in this tutorial aren't available to us in adjustment layers, so we can't use adjustment layers for this. Um, we could do everything just on the background layer, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. I like to have sort of control over the or some control over the adjustments I've made, either delete them or change the opacity if I want to reduce the uh, impact of that adjustment slightly. Um, and the first uh, first thing I'm going to do now is just to duplicate the uh, background layer so that I'm not working directly in the background layer, I'm working in a layer above it uh, so that it won't have a direct impact on the background layer. And the quickest way to do that is just drag the background layer, click and drag, to this icon here. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, if I mouse over that, it says create a new layer. And if we just drag the background layer over that, and there you go, we've got background copy. Uh, so that's probably the easiest way to do that. Uh, and we're now going to work in that particular layer, so we're not working directly in the background layer. Um, and I will change that the, the title there, background copy, to whatever adjustment I'm going to make. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, uh, but I'll make an adjustment to this image now, and then I'll change the title of that, uh, that layer so that I know what that adjustment was. Okay, so let's have a, a wander up here, uh, under image, um, adjustments. And we've got most of the, all these ones here um, are available with um, adjustment layers, but we've played around with adjustment layers enough, we've done uh, levels and curves, none of the other stuff really is of any interest to us, certainly not in this tutorial. Um, and we've got a few others down here, we've got desaturate, which basically turns it to black and white, match colour, uh, which I'm going to go into in a minute, replace colour, which I don't use, and equalise, which I don't use. Uh, so really match colour is, uh, is the next thing we're going to do, so if you click on uh, match colour, and that opens a dialog box that you can uh, hopefully see on the right hand side there, I'll bring it in a little bit further. I'm hoping that's uh, big enough, but I think I'll just zoom into that very quickly just to show you what it all is and then uh, we can zoom out again. Right, uh, hopefully you can see that. We've got luminance at the top, which I'm going to use, uh, and then we've got color intensity, which, I, color intensity, which I'm going to use. Fade, I don't use. Uh, and neutralize, I have used on occasion, but I would be a bit careful with that. You can see the result if you click on neutralize anyway in your image, and uh, you can decide then whether you want it or not. Um, so that's basically the controls that we're going to use here. We're going to use luminance and color intensity. It won't make a vast difference to the image. Most of the most of the changes we're going to make now are going to be quite subtle, uh, but they all make a difference. They all add up. Um, so I'm going to, uh, having shown you that box, I'm now going to uh, zoom back out again. Now before I make this adjustment, I'm just going to zoom into the um, galaxy, so you can see a little bit more clearly, okay you can see the galaxy now, see a little bit more clearly the effect that the adjustments I'm going to make has on the galaxy, warts and all now guys. Um, so lumin uh, well colour intensity first of all, I'm going to adjust that, I'm going to move that up to about 120. Um, and if this preview tick box here, if you untick that, uh, the image goes back to the way it was and then you tick it uh, and it gives you a preview of what the image would look like um, when that adjustment is applied. Uh, not a vast difference, as I say, most of the differences in, in this are going to be quite subtle. Uh, I'm going to move the luminance up as well to about 120. And then we'll click on the preview box, on and off, and I'm hoping you can see a slight difference in that. I might overcook it just a tad so that you can uh, you can actually see a difference. I'll put moving both up to 130. And we'll tick on that box, and then untick, tick, and hopefully you can see a difference in that. So I'll leave it at that, I'll click OK. Now I'm going to zoom back out again, when he lets me do it, OK, there we go. OK, now that's, uh, in a, I'm going to rename that layer now, down here, background copy. I'm going to rename that to uh, match colour. You just click on it once or twice. There we go, that's highlighted. Uh, change out the match colour. That was the adjustment we made. Okay, that's just to remind me. <coughs> and if I tick uh, the eye there, and that will turn it on and off, that's off, and that's on. And there is a, a slight difference in the uh, in the galaxy. It's now a little bit brighter, 
uh, we change the luminosity a little bit uh, and uh, the colors are a little bit more pronounced there is another thing that would adjust color which you can do in an adjustment layer uh, up here image adjustments hue saturation you could adjust the color with that and you could do that in an adjustment layer that tends to be a little bit of a sledgehammer really uh, match colors a bit more subtle uh, saturation can uh, and sort of over oversaturate the image really so I tend not to use that but uh, if you want to have a go you can make another adjustment layer a hue saturation adjustment layer and do a, a slight uh, change in saturation and see whether you like the result um, as, as always with these things play with it you're not going to break it uh, as long as you've got a copy of your image um, you can play with it and do whatever you like and uh, see what results you get okay so we've made uh, an adjustment to the uh, colour uh, just a, a small one and, and to the uh, luminance as well we've made an adjustment to that uh, so I'm now going to um, perhaps look at reducing the noise the, the, the image is going to be a little bit noisy um, so uh, we'll reduce that now and I'm going to create another layer um, <clears throat> and the way I'm going to do this so I'm going to uh, uh, first of all select the whole image with control A that's a fairly standard keyboard shortcut that you may be familiar with hold the control key down and hit A on your keyboard uh, and that selects the entire image. You should be able to see uh, a sort of a dotted line around the entire image now. Uh, so that's selected the image. Now Control C would normally copy it, and then Control V to paste it, and that would create a new layer. Uh, but what we want to do, we want to um, not only um, copy that layer, we want to copy everything below the layer. Um, so if you'd add several layers here with different adjustments in, uh, if you do Control Shift C hold control and shift down and hit the C key uh, that will copy all the layers beneath as well so all the information would be there and uh, that's the way I tend to uh, uh, put in a new layer uh, so it's control shift C that will copy the whole thing and then if you do control V and look at the layers palette down there or the layer panel control V and that puts in a new layer uh, and that layer will have all the information below included in it uh, so when that, we'll do our next adjustment in that layer now one thing you need to bear in mind when you're not using adjustment layers uh, this layer here is a copy of all the layers below and it contains all the information below if I then go back to this layer turn that one off for a minute it won't make any difference because you know to the image itself because it contains exactly the same information if I make an adjustment to this layer and the only adjustment I can really make is opacity uh, and if I reduce the opacity on that um, so that's basically reducing the effect of the adjustment we made match color if I wanted to do that it wouldn't actually have any impact on this layer at all because that layer this layer was copied um, from the layers below as they were at that time when I copied it um, so that's one thing you can't do with, the, with this type of adjustment if you're going to create new layers uh, and then decide you want to make a change to the layers beneath uh, beneath the layer that you're working on then you have to delete the layer you're working on make the adjustment and then create a new layer again um, I hope that's clear um, basically you know if you created a new layer by this method uh, any changes you make below it won't make any difference to the, to the layer on top because it's a copy of what was below it at that time okay okay I'm gonna go up to uh, filter uh, noise we're gonna reduce the noise now uh, and reduce noise is what we're gonna use for this click on that and it opens this rather large window you get a preview of the image okay um, and you can move this preview around by uh, clicking and dragging um, and you can zoom into it okay now I'm going to zoom into this little bit of luminosity here this little area um, if I click you can see the noise hopefully uh, hold the mouse down click and hold the uh, uh, the mouse key down uh, and then unclick uh, and that noise disappears I hope you can see that um, and that's the effect it's having on the image the settings that you've got there at the moment and the settings are strength uh, preserve detail reduce color noise and sharpen details um, play with these guys and see the difference it makes um, I'm going to increase preserve detail just a tad so that we don't lose too much detail in the galaxy uh, now if I uh, move across to the galaxy there and then click unclick so that's the uh, effect that the noise reduction is going to have and if I click on it that's what it was like before so the noise is uh, reduced I don't know how clear that's going to be on your screen but you'll have to trust me guys if you can't see it uh, and have a go yourself uh, and play with these uh, play with these controls uh, and see uh, how it turns out um, 
you know how much adjustment you want to make you can adjust these levels and see the impact it has on your image uh, and then decide on uh, what you think is best so I'm going to click OK on that and that's going to uh, change the noise level in the image I hope uh, and we can adjust this uh, the name of this layer to noise so that we know what it is uh, now if we'd made too much of an adjustment and we wanted to reduce the, reduce the effect a bit we could change the opacity of that layer just by clicking on opacity moving the slider back if we decided the noise reduction was a bit too severe move the slider back and, and uh, set it to uh, where, where we're happy with it okay so I'm going to leave it at 100% for now well right, having done that um, I'm now going to create another layer uh, so I click on the top layer again control A that copies uh, sorry that selects uh, control shift and C uh, that copies everything uh, below the layer and then control V and that creates a new layer with all the information below it so don't forget if I then wanted to make an adjustment to the noise layer by reducing the opacity it wouldn't have any effect on this layer I'd have to delete this layer again and then create a new one okay okay now this layer is going to be for sharpening the image uh, so again we got the filter um, sharpen unsharp mask there's several ways to sharpen an image you've got sharpen, sharpen edges, sharpen more smart sharpen and unsharp mask um, I tend to use unsharp mask or there is another method where, where we use a high pass filter uh, but I'm going to show you unsharp mask for now which is fairly straightforward click on that and that opens this box um, and I think I might uh, actually zoom into that box guys so that you get a clear view of it okay now we've got a, a little preview window again uh, which will show you the effect of the um, sharpening before and after um, and the controls we've got down here, we've got the amount that's shown at 50% at the moment, which can be adjusted or with this slider. Um, radius, um, 2.5 pixels, uh, and then threshold. Threshold I tend to leave alone, to be honest. Uh, these other two, you can fiddle with them. Um, and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't put this above 50. If you, if you go too heavy on that, it can have quite a horrible effect on your image. But um, um, just adjust it. You've got this preview button as, <coughs> excuse me, preview button as well, uh, and that shows you, that shows the actual image. You can't see that at the moment because I'm zoomed in. But uh, you can unclick that and click it, and that shows you the impact on the whole image itself. Um, and there's no point in showing you that because you probably wouldn't be able to see it on your screen anyway. Um, but what we can do, we can zoom in on this like we did before, uh, and then click, unclick click before, unclick after uh, and we can make perhaps a slight adjustment to this, bring it down a little bit uh, click, <coughs> unclick uh, now if I move across to a star, this is something you have to be careful of with sharpening because if you do too much sharpening you'll end up with a nasty black halo around your stars, I'm going to wake this up and see if I can reproduce that um, now click and unclick, you can see the difference there, it's blindingly obvious and that's far far too much so be careful how much of an adjustment you actually make to uh, to this I wouldn't put it above sort of 50 uh, and I'm going to bring this down to about 40 and that should do it I'm just going to click on the preview button you can't see this but I can uh, and when we uh, when I zoom out again you'll be able to see the difference okay I'm happy with that so I'm going to click OK and then zoom out again okay I'm going to rename this layer noise uh, not noise sharpen isn't it S-H-A-R-P-E-N sharpen uh, so we've got sharpen noise match colour there so we've got the three adjustments we've just made um, now I'm going to zoom into this image slightly so you can see the galaxy and then I'll click this sharpen layer on and off and hopefully you can see the difference that's uh, with the sharpen layer deactivated and that's sharpened and hopefully you can see the difference there ok good alright guys I think um, that's probably about it really I've shown you sharpening noise reduction match colour changing luminosity there's a few, there's few other bits and pieces that you can uh, you can do and as I say as always the best thing to do is uh, is play with this stuff that's how you get to learn it um, I'm going to open the original image now and uh, the very original image that we got off of DSS just to show you a sort of a comparison and that brings up this dialog box you may remember click on OK and there we go that's what we got off of DSS and that's what we've got now a little bit of a difference I think you'll agree uh, quite pleased with that all in all uh, now you may want to save your image at uh, this stage if you wanted to save it with all the layers intact uh, then you can save it um, as a PSD file uh, Photoshop file which is file save as Uh, and then, oh, not that one. Uh, select 
PSD at the top. Uh, and that saves it as a Photoshop file and that, and that preserves all the layers. So if you want to open it again and fiddle around with the layers, you can do so. Um, but what you will want to do is save it certainly as a JPEG. If you're going to upload it to a site somewhere, you want it to be a JPEG. So file, save as again. Um, select JPEG. Change the name to something that's meaningful, like M51, which is the Galaxy. Um, and then click on Save. And it opens this, and that and it's asking you what uh, quality to do the image. I, I would always select the highest quality, which is 12. But it's a large file, but uh, it's the best quality image. Uh, so select that, click on OK, and that saved it as a JPEG. OK. All right, guys. I really hope you found this series of tutorials uh, useful. Um, some of them are a bit long, and I apologise for that. Uh, but it does cover a lot of ground, and I do try and explain things in as much detail as I can. Um, if, by the way, you want... Uh, a copy of this image, uh, the original TIFF file off of uh, DSS, uh, to practice with. Um, if you, as you go through the tutorials, just uh, send me a message uh, via YouTube, uh, and I'll happily upload the image to a, a free website somewhere, and you can download it, uh, and then you can uh, play with the image itself, which will uh, be good fun. Uh, have a little practice, uh, and you're very welcome to, uh, you know, once you've uh, processed it, to send me your results, and uh, hopefully some of you will get a better result than this, because. Uh, I've done this sort of fairly quickly for the purposes of this tutorial. We can get a little bit more detail out of this. And there are certain other things we can do as well. The stars don't look too clever. Um, they're not exactly round. Uh, but there are things we can do which I'll show in the latest tutorial to actually correct that and make the stars round and things like that. Um, all right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have. And uh, I shall speak to you soon.